Hey guys, it's Emma here, and today we are in the studio, which um, there's a lot going on right now, <laughs> as you can see. Um, but today I'm tackling a load of work and also some self portraits, and I will also be showing you guys how I create my multiple self portraits. Um, this is something that I've done a lot in the past where there is multiple versions of me or different characters in the same image. I'll be showing you guys how I set up the photo, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the meaning behind it and also the different characters I'll be creating, and then I'll also talk you through the editing process. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so this is currently the setup from my last shoot, um, which will be moving everything around. But the lights I'm using today, I'm using two Profoto B1s. There we go. The lights, I'll be using two Profoto B1s. Um, so one above and one to the side. And with that, I'm using the Fotex Soft Lighter uh, 60 inch with the fuser. And then I'm also using a Profoto Deep Umbrella in white um, with the fuser, and that is medium sized. Um, I'm still gonna keep this background. I really like the nice neutral charcoal background. Why is my focus playing up? I don't know, I apologize. Um, but this was actually the setup from the last shoot. So I'm gonna go ahead and move everything. This light is actually hanging directly above. I've propped it up on a C stand. And um, because I was paranoid and didn't think the sandbar was gonna be enough, I've put my bag on there as well. I decided to keep the lighting set up the way it was, with the one light directly above and another at a 45 degree angle to the side. I also decided to keep the grey background as it was a nice neutral colour that didn't distract from the foreground and it's also easy to edit over in post. As I wanted to set a scene and tell a sort of story, I decided to place two chairs in the middle as a way for the different characters to interact with each other and to also break the scene up a little bit. So the theme of this self-portrait is identity and it covers all aspects or most aspects of my personality as we are never just one thing. In my case the image consists of five different characters each making up different aspects of my own personality. So there is the masculine androgynous side, the overly feminine side, the depression and anxiety aspect of my personality, the confident feminist and myself as the artist and photographer capturing the scene. There are of course many other layers to my personality as is the case with most people but these are just five different traits that are easily identifiable and can be manifested into a physical character. The costumes aren't too extravagant or flamboyant, they're very simple as they don't distract from different characters, they're all very equal and they're just easy to edit with as well. I also needed outfits that were super quick to change as I had a very limited amount of time with which to do this in. So the first character being the androgynous masculine side of my personality, I wanted to really demonstrate it as quite a broody, stern personality, one that was sort of asserting dominance. Um, the way I sat on the chair, the way I'm resting my elbows on my knees, it's sort of asserting this kind of prowess. Facial expressions are also really important in this and you need to be able to act in order to convey the different characters, otherwise it just looks like you in different costumes. The second character is probably the most easily recognisable. It is myself as the artist and photographer, of course wearing the somewhat trademark fedora hat now, I've noticed. Um, a lot of people seem to recognise me by that. And of course, not only am I all in black with the fedora hat, I'm also holding my Mamiya camera. I'm also holding the remote shutter release. I'm actually holding this with most of the characters in frame, but I'm concealing it. It was just easier to take multiple ones rather than setting the camera on a timer and getting up and moving. But I wanted this character to be the central character and I wanted the remote shutter release to be visible as if it were me taking this scene of us all together.
The third character speaks to the feminine side of my personality. It's very sensual and graceful. The way she's lounged sort of effortlessly in the foreground, um, as if she were sunbathing. This one actually kind of hurt my hip a little, <laughs> so I didn't spend too much time on this character. Once I thought I got it, that was it. I stopped trying to redo it again and again. When it comes to thinking up ideas and how the characters are going to interact and what characters will be wearing what items of clothing, I really just sort of wing it. I never really draw out my portraits, that might be surprising to some, but I just sort of make it up as I go along. I always pre-visualise my work, so it's just easy for me to change in my head. The fourth personality represented the anxiety and depression and the slightly darker, quieter side of myself. So I had her in a black shroud, sort of hiding behind the masculine, more confident figure. The final character is seen as the feminist, confident, sensual, sexually liberated aspect of my personality. It is the part that feels the most comfortable with her own body. Once again, with the third personality, this was super quick and easy to shoot. I didn't have to faff around so much before getting what I wanted. But once I was happy with what I got, I decided to move on. So once all of the images have been selected, I begin the process of stitching them together in Photoshop. When creating a multiple self-portrait, it's super important to keep the camera on a tripod and not move it whatsoever because even if there is a slight change in angle or composition, it can make the post-production process so much more difficult. As it's the easiest one to work around, I used the central figure as a base and then I used the overlay tool to quickly position each character how I wanted to make sure it was exact within the frame and there were no errors or overlaps. Once this is all sorted, I then simply use the erase tool and the clone tool to stitch each layer together. There's not really much I can say on this process as it is just rinse and repeat with each character. So I've sped it up for you <laughs> so you can see the majority of what I do. I also increase the brightness to a stupid degree in some of the areas. That's because the image is quite dark and I need to make sure that I'm not erasing anything in the shadows that doesn't need to be erased. So after lots and lots of tweaking and painstakingly checking everything to make sure it was okay over and over again, the image was finally ready to be cropped and colour corrected. Of course, I'm not going to show you how I edited out all of the background and made it into one plain backdrop as that was just too painstaking and boring. And also I just didn't want to spend too much time on the background as you guys kind of get the idea. After that I simply retouched out any blemishes that were on the character and did a quick bit of colour correcting. I also lowered the red tone slightly using the curves tool. And with that, there you have a multiple self-portrait. Thank you for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications to see more. And I will see you next week with another self-portrait video. Thanks guys.